So for this video, we're going to discuss how to navigate the various views of the systems control module, also how to start a run, and finally how to start a method. But before we do that, just real quickly, I want to explain to you what the setup is. On the first port of the column valve, we have a high trap desalting column. We also have a one mil loop on the injection valve with, with a protein in it. And then we also have a big vat of buffer that we can draw from that's on the A1 line, the A1 inlet line. So in the sample control module, it's all it's common to see this view where you have absolutely nothing there. That just means you haven't connected to your system. All you need to do in order to connect to the system is push this button right here. Now, I don't know what's going on with my particular setup. I'm not directly plugged into the system right now. So there should be a bunch of boxes right here. So I'm just going to connect to this system right here and click the box and then um, hit OK. Now this should be the view that you're used to seeing. Um, Unicorn will automatically connect to a system if it was able to last time. Uh, sometimes you may not be able to connect to a system so like or the last time so that's why you'll see that like completely empty view before. Uh, there are four basic areas of the systems control module. Um, there's the run data group, the chromatograms, the run log and the process picture but um, just to get started there's also these system prompts up here we have file and edit but also the manual mode so today we're going to kind of do um, starting a manual run and how to like navigate like all the views like at the same time because um, it's, it's just easier so we're going to go, we're going to go hit manual and then execute manual instruction. And this is the manual instruction window. And this is actually very intuitive in my opinion. It's pretty straightforward. There are these radio buttons right here. And if you want to get set running your chromatography system, click on this button and then system flow is the first one that comes up. And all you have to do is enter a flow rate. So here we're going to do five mils a minute execute and if we look down here at the run log you can see it says system flow five mils a minute so and that was when it was completed and it was executed here earlier on now with a method with a manual instruction window is we can use the macro that's over here that's that, that's what we're going to discuss right now you can execute several instructions all at once in this macro so for example let's go down here and click on let's set some alarms just in case the system gets over pressured or we find air so system pressure let's turn that on for a high trap column i like to do 0.5 megapascals and then i'm going to go over here and hit insert and then i'm going to turn on the air sensor insert so you notice over here in the run log these two instructions haven't been issued but once i hit execute they'll both be issued there we go all right now let's go look at the process picture this green line represents the flow that's going through the system and you can see that it's bypassing the column so let's like we want to be able to wash the column with let's just say one column volume of the buffer we're doing before we actually start the chromatography run so i need to go to flow path and column position position one execute all right so now uh all these views are customizable um, that we now that we've got a manual run going let's see what sorts of things we can do with the views that we have to customize for example the run data window 
let's say we don't like knowing what the sample pressure is. Um, it's just there are too many, for our argument's sake, let's say there are too many um, you know, items up here that we're viewing in the run data log. So we're gonna right click and go to customize and we'll turn off, we'll find the sample pressure and just unclick it and hit okay. And then likewise in the chromatogram, let's say I don't like the curve for the sample pressure just because it's behind this other curve. It's down here, I think. Yeah, it's all the way along the bottom. And let's say it's not telling us anything. It's just more information that's getting in the way. So right click, go to customize, find the sample pressure curve and unclick that checkbox. Okay. Now we can change what we're seeing on the Y axis if we want to, just by clicking on the key right here. So I'm going to click on conductivity and you'll notice now that the Y axis has changed to conductivity. The x-axis is also um, customizable. We can click on the view, the ML here, and you can switch back and forth between minutes and mils. If we're running a method and the system knows the size of the column, you can do column volume as well. So the run log is customizable. So let's hit right click and customize. And if we wanted to, for example, we could turn off alarms and warnings. Um, now, that isn't really helpful. Uh, it, you know, like you really want to be able to see that, but you know, the information, if you have this unchecked, the information is still going to be recorded. So I like alarms on. All right, so I'm going to stop this run by clicking on the stop button up here. Okay, and while we're running the method, I'll show you how to change a few more of the views. A few more things you can change with the view. All right, so in order to run a method, you just select the net method navigator, which can be um, a right tab button right here. And I'm gonna do desalting high trap, this first one on the top. There are other ways you can start a method. So for example, I could go to open method navigator, this file, which just the same thing as cur like hovering the cursor over that, see? And I could also go to file and open, which gives me the same thing. Anyways, so starting the high, so let's select this desalting high trap method. Now the author of the method is gonna give you, you know, several different uh, run setup windows to work through and they just feel that those um, each of those run setup windows will tell you something important about the method uh, you know oftentimes you've run a method lots before so you can kind of just click through these I like having this one here because it helps to remind me that I have to load a fraction into the fraction collector um, then the next is, I just click next to go through these these are the the list of run windows we have to get through the variable list you know you can change each of the possible variables on here so for example the column position i could if i had the column the the high trap column and position two i could change it here if i wanted to but i have it in position one all these are changeable and then you know, this allows me to select where I'm going to save the file. Right now, I'm just going to hit no result because this is just a test example and hit start. So you may have this. This is just allows you to log the you know serial number of the column that you're running so you can track how many times the column has been run and how often you're using it. But I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, so this method will wash the system for five mils, then it'll wash the column for 10 mils, so that's a total of 15 mils, and then it will load the sample onto the column. So while we wait for that to happen, I wanna show you how you can move around the chromatograms, the run logs, and the process picture 
to more customize the views that you want to look at. So I personally like to have the process picture over here on the right and the run log over here on the left, but you know, you may prefer it to be the opposite. So how you change that is you click on this bar right here and you can move it over here in the cursor. And this just says, okay, I want the process picture to be the, on the left side of the current view. So there, now they'll switch. Of course, you can also um, you move the chromatogram around too. So let's say I want to do the run log um, on the left side of the chromatogram because I think the run log is more important. Uh, you can use a tab view. So this process picture is awfully large right now. So let's say I want to put it behind the run log and that's the center of the cursor. And then you can make the chromatogram nice and big if we wanted to, let's put it in the center tab. So now I can click between all three views. I don't like that though. So what I'm going to do is put the process picture down. Chromatogram, I'm going to put the, take the process picture and put it down low. So now I have the run log and I'm going to put it to the left. There we go. And you can play around with those till you find something you like. And then you can also change the size of these. So the chromatogram much bigger. All right, another thing you can do too is you can zoom in just by you know, holding it on the cursor and right clicking. I don't. And then you can go back to your zoom by hitting unzoom right there. Okay, a lot of people get confused by these buttons up here between pause and hold. So pause will stop the system flow from going on. Uh, hold will maintain the flow, but it won't allow the system to progress through the method anymore. So as I was saying, this system will inject the sample at 15 mils. If I hit hold for, you know, a mil or two, then uh, the, the system will inject the sample, the, you know, the same amount of volume that I held it for, that I hit hold for, like later. So right now we're coming up on 13 mils. I'm just going to hit hold for, you know, a, a mil or two. Let's just do one mil. So right here we can see hold was issued at 13.3. At 14.3, let's hit continue. There we go. So now the sample should inject at uh, 16 mils, roughly. We've already passed 15 mils uh, right here up in the accumulated volume and around around because we only hit hold for one mil. So, yep, right around 16 mils, it started the injection. Now, another thing that I see a lot that people do that I would like to show you is the run data log. The run log is on in the chromatogram. I really don't like that. Um, so let me show you how to turn it off. Well, I'm going to turn it on first so you can see it. So the run log is curve 22. Click that, hit OK. And you can see all this text, it really gets in the way, in my opinion, of being able to see what's going on with the chromatogram. So to turn it off, you just you know, right click and then just like I was when I was turning it on, it's curve 22. It might be a different number for you, but it's labeled run log. Okay. So just one or two more buttons I want to show you while the method finishes up is the documentation button. So if I wanted to review the text instructions for this method, I could do that by clicking this button. And this will show, show me everything uh, about this method. So if the author of the method wrote any notes for me, they'd be here in the notes section. The, test, the text instructions are here under this tab and you know the system information that was written for uh you know like that's like really detailed technical information oh how long the method will take so method duration is under method information so right here it should take five minutes to run this method and we'll use approximately 27 mils there's a lot of information 
uh, that's available in the systems control module. Okay, this method should be done any second now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helps you uh, navigate the systems control module.